Welcome to my Solo 401k Financials podcast. My name is George Blower. I'm one of the principals of my Solo 401k Financial. And today we will be speaking to Tony Denito, owner of Route Tycoon. Specifically, we will be discussing the ins and outs of buying a route business, such as a FedEx, bread, or chip route. So Tony, welcome and thank you for joining. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. So great. So Tony, if you could please take a moment to just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit how, about your path to the route industry. Yeah. So my degree is actually in logistics and I've got a bit of educational background in that, but I was actually working in the financial services with Charles Schwab before a little bit professionally and almost co by coincidence, I, I bumped into uh, a UPS guy years ago that mentioned that FedEx routes could be bought and sold, which, which I thought was uh, ludicrous at the time. Uh, the more I looked into it, though, the more I got interested and uh, ended up getting a few routes uh, some years ago on multiple routes for several years and uh, decided that I really enjoyed being able to teach people how to evaluate these types of businesses to get into it. And uh, that's whenever I really created Route Tycoon. And I I've been managing that for about six years or so. Yeah, that sounds like it was a very fortuitous uh, meeting that you had there. What is... <laughs> What, is, what are some of the services that Route Tycoon provides? So basically we provide the services that we think our clients actually need, and which is really learning how to evaluate the route that they may be looking at, right? So uh, to look at, or to learn how the documentation is read, to understand it themselves and to not end up in a situation where they end up going to some business advisor that's treated like a magic eight ball that uh, you know, magically just spits out whether a route is good or bad or something like that. That doesn't really help people. Um, what I'm more interested in doing is actually teaching people the process of how to evaluate these routes themselves. Okay, that's great. And that's really, that really dovetails with uh, my solo 401k financials approach as well. We do really try to take a educational approach with, with our clients. And for our clients, the route a route business is, is certainly one of the most popular businesses that we help clients fund. And so we're, where we fit in the mix, of course, is we help people use their retirement money to finance the, the purchase of a route. So with our services, they're able to access whatever it might be, 100, 200, or more $1,000 from, say, an IRA without paying taxes or penalties and use it to fund the purchase of that business where they're going to be actively involved in managing and operating the route business. So this is going to be a great session. And so in that vein of education, um, could you take a minute and just kind of start with the basics, please, and tell us, you know, what is a route business? What is the advantage of a route business, et cetera? Yeah, so a route business is where some sort of major company has decided that instead of using employees to go out and deliver something, they're using independent contractors. So FedEx has a model like this, also a lot of bread route companies, and uh, they basically do the same thing, that instead of having employees from Snyder's Lance or something like that, they're basically having those contractors go out there and have their products delivered. So uh, the advantage to a, a model like this is that instead of the typical sort of business, uh, really there's two advantages. Um, and where instead of having to worry about, you know, like things like the advertising or accounts receivable or those sorts of things, all these things are basically done for us. All we're really having to do is to make sure that the products get from point A to point B, uh, whether it's a package from FedEx or a piece of bread from Pepperidge Farm, it doesn't matter. Um, because basically what we're focused on are just those things. So as long as we can keep an employee in those trucks, uh, the trucks running, everything else just kind of falls into place. Now, the other advantage to a business model like this is that instead of, say, like a franchise where you're kind of like rolling the dice or something, you know, looking on the back of a paper napkin to get an idea of some sort of estimate of how much you might make, because they don't know you know what it's going to be since you're opening up a new location or whatever you know so instead of that we have an established business here when you're acquiring a route it's already established so the people that gravitate towards this are people looking for a bit more stability and uh, a little bit of a safer acquisition because they can see what last week's paycheck was right um you know and, and then if you're evaluating things appropriately 
you know, you can make a pretty good guess on what you should be making tomorrow and understand what those risks are. So to me, the due diligence process and the way these businesses are structured is, is way better than a franchise. Now, on the other side of the equation, you could say that, well, maybe I'll just buy a typical established business like a coffee shop or a car wash. But the thing is, is when you're dealing with that, it's just you and the seller. You know, we don't know exactly what documents to be looking for. Um, are the documents legitimate? Are they faked? Have they lied on their tax returns? You know, what are all the sort of different things that could possibly go wrong here versus at FedEx, you've got a contract that's basically already set out that's good enough for all the other contractors out there. Um, everyone else is already using it. Everything is very standardized. So we don't end up traveling into this murky path of not knowing what to do. So whenever you do know how to evaluate these routes appropriately, it becomes very, very easy versus a typical sort of business or something like that. The types of routes that we really have out there are really just two major types. So you got the FedEx routes and, and the bread routes. And so with FedEx, you've got your line haul, which is the tractor trailers going across the country. And then you've got your home delivery and your ground, which is a bit separate from line haul in that they evaluate and operate a little bit differently than the typical home delivery and ground that a lot of people are used to when they interact with FedEx. Now, on the bread route side of things, you've got multiple companies that operate, such as uh, Snyder's Lance, Flowers, you know, they own like the Nature's Own bread line, uh, Bimbo, which owns multiple product lines, such as Aura Wheat and Sara Lee, um, and then Mission Tortilla are some of the bigger route companies out there. So when we look at a route business, we're likely looking at one of these companies. And there's others out there, but not a whole lot of volume. Um, not a whole lot of trading is really going on in, in the other routes. And so a popular question that people ask me when we first end up chatting is, why are there so many routes for sale? You know, um, And the reality that has to do with an observer bias, right? So if all you see whenever you go out there to look for routes is the ones for sale, well, it's impossible for you to see the ones that aren't for sale we're basically on the outside looking in and so when people say well, why are these routes for sale there's like a hundred of them for sale across america or whatever you could also be asking me why the 4200 other routes aren't for sale so there's a little bit of a contrast there that can really show that observer bias and, and, and definitely there are reasons why people are selling and um, you know, some are legitimate, you know, they're retiring or I'm moving or my mother's sick and I got to move across the country and that's fine. The other reality is that people are selling because either brokers or sellers have misstated how much it's time it's going to take or, you know, the seller misstated on how much, um, you know, money it's going to make or over exaggerated things in some sort of way. Um, and some people be very interested in the business if they thought it was going to make 200,000 that was claimed. But when they get into the business without proper education, they end up finding out that they're actually going to make 125000 So, and, and I mean, there's very few situations where someone's bought a route and they're just losing money completely. Like, the industry itself is very legitimate. However, sellers and brokers may be legitimate or not. You know, you get a little bit of a mix in there. Yeah, no, what you've been saying, uh, is that's great, Tony. It actually resonates a lot with me. Because, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the advantages, some of the things that stick out to me are the, the certainty, the standardization, you know, the fact that you are, you're buying into, I mean, FedEx or with these companies, they're huge companies, they have a huge brand name, right? They're not going anywhere. I know, yep. I know in my house, yeah. it seems like there's a <laughs> right. packages, right? With all the online shopping going on. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I could see that it seems like a great business, especially again resonating with me because in our world a lot of the people that we help out like the standard client that we have is probably somebody who is you know say in their 50s they are now looking to make a second career move right they have a significant mm -hmm. uh, balance in their retirement account but they're not quite ready to retire right for whatever reason they're just right trying to exactly. out of corporate america and so for them they have a lot of good skills and expertise. Obviously they have the financial resources, but something that something like this, it's going to be uh, something that they're going to feel comfortable stepping to as opposed to 
right. start from the ground up, start from scratch mm-hmm. type of business. Yeah. So yeah, that really resonates a lot. So, you know, how, um, for somebody who's looking to buy a route business, you know, what are the, how do you find a route business for sale? I mean, do you just go and knock on the, you know, ask your FedEx delivery guy or asking the uh, FedEx delivery guys, uh, you know, you could do that. Um, you know, there's just actually a strategy behind doing that. But for most people, I'm, I'm probably not going to recommend doing that. But but yeah, you can't just show up to the terminal. Those are highly secured facilities where you're not going to be able to just solicit and say, hey, anybody out there want to sell a route? You know, that's not going to work. So what we really have to do is go to a couple of the main websites that just about every major broker will use. And, and that's one is bizbuysell.com and bizquest.com. And both of those sites together will probably comprise about 90, 95% of the routes out there. Uh, the other remaining routes might be advertised elsewhere. Who, who knows? Um, but those are the two main sources. But for the bread routes, um, Craigslist actually is a really good way to find routes. Um, you know, like if you go under businesses for sale, uh, it's, it's really a great way to find one of those, uh, the bread routes. So, and they're a little bit on the smaller side of the acquisition since bread routes typically cost 150000 or less. Uh, FedEx routes would typically cost 150000 up to, you know, around $100 million and a half or so. Uh, but the average sale price for FedEx routes is probably around 400000 or so. Uh, I mean, you unlikely find a bread route that's, you know, for sale at 400,000 level. I see. Okay. Okay. So how do you evaluate a route business? Um, so, I mean, you go yeah. to one on the website, you know, what are the, because I know you said it's sort of somewhat standardized, right? So it, it is. And so when you're evaluating those things, it's a bit different for FedEx versus bread. So, so let's take a step back and think about the difference between these. So what happens with a bread route is that grocery stores, and this was news to me whenever I owned my first bread route, is that grocery stores are kind of like consignment stores. A lot of the stuff that's on those shelves is not owned by the grocery store. It's basically contracted out to where the grocery store says, hey, Mission Tortilla or Snyder's Lance, you guys put the stuff up on the shelf. And so when I used to walk through the grocery stores and I see people putting something up on the shelf, I thought, well, that must be a grocery store employee. But it's actually a lot of times independent contractors that are basically filling up those shelves. So that's kind of what we're looking at on the bread route side of things. Whether it's Pepperidge Farm with numerous bread lines or Snyder's Lance or Mission, it doesn't matter. Uh, because all they're really operating on is, this, is the same policy. With, with FedEx routes, there's a little bit of distinguishment there, whether it's uh, within the line hall side of things, which again is a little bit more for the seasoned logistics professional or someone that's really wanting to just dive into the model either one would really work out just fine and, and then on the other side you've got the hd and ground where we're delivering mostly to residences for the home delivery side and, and then ground which mostly delivers to businesses um, maybe they're delivering to walmart or something like that maybe 20 or 30 packages you know going to those businesses so if you think about those differences, the evaluation process for each of these things is, is going to be, well, different, right? So looking at a bread route is typically much easier. Looking at line haul routes uh, is, is a bit more on the difficult end of terms of like, uh, like how transparent things can be. On home delivery and ground, even if the seller is making up stuff or typing in whatever number he wants into Excel or providing tax returns that can't be legitimately read, th- there's other pieces of documentation in the home delivery and ground side that we can rely upon to basically give us our own very good guesses, right? And so that comes with having the experience to say, hey, here's what 100 routes have looked like over the last couple of years, and this one falls into this particular spot. and. Once you have those sorts of averages and know how to place that route, you can start to tweak and figure out, you know, what questions exactly we need to ask. So evaluating these businesses is really boiling down to, and this is an easy process. And I I like to say that it's like walking through a minefield. If I tell you where all the mines are, it's easy. And if I don't, you're going to blow up, right? So it's not going to go well. And so it is an easy process. And once we go through that documentation together, we end up getting answers from the broker or the seller and go back and forth creating new questions. And eventually throughout that rinse and repeat cycle, we get to the bottom on how much they're actually making 
how much time it actually takes to run the business, things like that, right? And people forget about that. They they look at a route and they say, well, this one's making 80,000 or 100,000 and this one makes 200,000. Well, this one must be better. And it's like, not necessarily, right? Because there's an issue in that you're not thinking about this in terms of reality, which is that this money isn't gonna just effortlessly roll into your bank account absentee until the end of time. You don't wanna fall into that sales pitch. And so what we have to do is figure out how much time and effort is really involved with these businesses. You know, if that kind of like makes sense. Okay, yeah. So so essentially, the it sounds like one of the core values that you bring is being that person that knows where the minds are, having that expert that right. experience and expertise to be able to evaluate, ask the right questions, and actually probably look for different actually sources to help really uh, know what the real deal is with a particular route that's for sale. Exactly, exactly. So there's really a number of tricks that have come up in this industry that have been pretty numerous and so some people i've seen will have absolutely perfect financials everything's perfect completely legit and then we find out that the business the way it's currently managed is head for headed basically for disaster and we'll probably talk about that a little bit later but it, maybe it's not really functional in its current form the way that they're selling it so there's a bit more complexity you'll see than just how much money does it make and how much time does it take. A bigger question for me, especially if I'm using my retirement funds for a business like this is, hey, do I have something sustainable enough to where I can repay this without a whole ton of risk? Because I don't want a whole ton of risk, that's why I'm looking at this particular type of business, right? So um, when you, you really need to understand how this business operates and works and there's, really a lot of wonderful things about these routes beyond just the stability or, or whatever they do bring, you know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I guess start to finish, I mean, once you identify that, that route that you want to buy, I mean, how long mm -hmm. does the process typically take to, to, uh, to take over the route and start operating it? Yeah. In terms of, people often wondering how they can even find a good route to begin with. They come to me and say, hey, look at this particular route bundle or, or look at that one. And really all of them, they're like children, right? You know, I love them all equally. <laughs> at least that's, you know, what we say. Um, and what happens is once we get more information, we get a little bit more of the unique attributes of, of, that each one has. You know, oh, this one will make a lot of money or uh, this one has a lot of growth or this one is going to make a whole lot of money but be a nightmare to manage or this one's not going to make any money or have any growth but it's going to be smooth and easy to run. Um, you know, really, so there's no good or, or bad route. I like to just think that there are routes that are better fit for certain people. Some people want to be more absentee. Some people want to be more hands-on, make more money, less money, whatever. You know, you've got a lot of different things going on behind the scenes. So to be able to go through that process and answer your question on how, how long does this process take, if we can get the info from a broker very fast, since when you're working with me, it's also very fast. You know, I respond to 100% of my emails within 48 hours. Doesn't matter if it's a night, weekend, whatever. 48 hours is the longest delay you'll ever have from me. So with that being the case, and with how smoothed out this process has become for me from doing this year after year, and my background also being in corporate training, we can get through it pretty quickly. Now, does that mean a broker's gonna be able to respond and get us all the information in a timely fashion? Uh, you know, sometimes it takes these guys two or three weeks to respond, which is absurd and unheard of in any other industry, but you know, guess what? That's the world we live in. We gotta deal with it and that's okay. So let's go ahead and say that it takes one to three weeks for us to be able to evaluate the business. But you know, then beyond that, it could take longer depending upon the broker. So maybe one to three weeks to evaluate going back and forth between phone and email. Once that's done, I mean, if you're asking how long does it take to get the route in my name and, and be getting a, pay, a paycheck from FedEx or the bread route company, the answer to that question is probably like two to four months since there's a lot that we've got to go on in terms of getting the corporation set up and that kind of deal to get approved by these companies. And you know, that does take a couple months, sometimes up to four months, you know, it, it just all depends. Sure. Because of course they've got a, the buyer would have to get 
approved by the corporate headquarters, right? Whether it's FedEx or Mission Tour. Yeah, exactly. Whoever it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Okay. Now, given our experience, um, I've heard about this IC to ISP transition, and I've done a, yeah. do a little reading about it, but I probably, uh, I, I'm certainly not the expert that you are on it. So if you, mm -hmm. could you comment a little bit about that, please, Tony? Yeah, so, so this is an awesome question because it really wraps up a lot of the other things we've talked about, like why are people selling, you know? Um, why would someone want to stop doing business with FedEx? And what would make it a route a disaster to own? You know, what are those top potential reasons? So in the IC to ISP transition, you know, the, IS, the IC stands for independent contractor. Uh, the ISP is now known as the independent service provider. Now, this is just some corporate bit of corporate jargon. You know, since both of the situations are still independent contractors, even though ISP dropped the independent contractor term. Uh, so when we look at what's happened, because I could tell you what ISP is right now, but you know, it's more important to see a little bit of history lesson with ISP. When ISP first started off, and it's been over 10 years since this term was really out there with FedEx, you know, it was the idea that you were gonna have to own three routes or more. So FedEx corporate says, yeah, you know what? We want to have people that own three routes or more, and that's who we want to do business with. No more of these one or two route owners or contractors. You know, we want to deal with real businesses rather than just someone with a you know overpaid job. So then FedEx says, you know, some time passes, and then they say, ah, oh, you know what? Just kidding. Let's make it five routes. And so then that happened. Contractors are saying, oh, okay. Well, let me get a loan. Let me let me go let me go get some more money to buy some more routes. And, and so now they've got five routes. And then FedEx comes out a couple years later and says, you know, just kidding. Let's make it five routes, and, but now they need to be contiguous or adjacent to one another. So at this, so at this point, it, it's like a late stage game of Monopoly where everyone's got a piece of property and there's that point where you've got to start trading your property with some other people, spending some money with some other people to get a Monopoly because otherwise the game's going to go on for forever, you know, and that's what the ISP transition really looks like. It's people trying to get up to owning five contiguous routes. And, and a lot of people, you know, complained and said, no, I don't want to deal with FedEx anymore. I had four routes. They're great. I don't want to own a fifth route. Um, I don't want to manage a business like that. Uh, you know, I'm not that ambitious or, you know, whatever the reason is. Um, you know, they just decided, screw it. I'm, I'm done with FedEx. You know, and going back again, that might be another answer on why people are selling, you know, since they don't want to deal with FedEx. And who knows, maybe in five years they say, hey, seven route minimum or something like that. You know, I doubt that'll happen. And I think we'll see some other things occur, in my opinion. But anyway, uh, you know, that's still a possibility. And sometimes people feel very nervous about, you know, working with FedEx. So in my opinion, though, I think it's great because what it does is it keeps us wildly competitive and it keeps us on that competitive edge so people you know people ask me well are we competing against the postal service or ups is that what's happening and yet and yes we are a little bit and i really feel like we're in some sort of symbiotic relationship with those other couriers and we all kind of like each other in this game together i mean fedex's stock is doing well you know really well right now you know it's mid 2016 um, but you know, things are going pretty well right now. And, you know, as you said earlier, people are ordering more stuff and getting more stuff delivered to their house, you know, than they ever were before. That's probably not going to be changing. Right. So with that being said, I think about us being competitive in this ISP environment, as in we're keeping out every other Kickstarter campaign for, you know, every other package delivery company and, and things like that. Like when Amazon tried to do it. They got one little tiny piece of this niche, which is the Amazon same day prime service. And that actually hit home delivery side a little bit, but FedEx came right back with some other stuff, some other programs. And you know, now we've got just as much volume, if not more. So what I'm interested in seeing is things like when Google says, Hey, let's get in the package industry, you know, FedEx just crushes them out. And that's the sort of competition that I like. Because if I'm using something like my retirement funds, I don't want some company that's like, well, let's just go out and eat, drink, and be merry, and, and drink margaritas, you know, because I need a company that's behind me 
Because if all I'm doing is caring about my trucks running and my employees are delivering packages, I need the company above me that says, we're gonna make sure to the best of our ability that you're gonna be okay, not in a year, not or two years, but 10 years or whatever it is, you know, uh, to be the best that we can to make you competitive, to make sure that your routes are streamlined, you know, that they're close together, you know, that you have economies of scale and that you're more profitable as well, right? So now that comes down with some growing pains, you know, um, since if you didn't have the money to be able to do that, that's a, that's a big problem. And other than that, like that's basically what this big ISP transition is really about. It's, be, it's, it's been advantageous for people getting in before the transition, you know, that are knowledgeable about this business or have spoken with me, you know, versus, you know, some people are doing very well that have entered into states that have already done the ISP transition doing just fine as well. Okay. So, yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting perspective, Tony. So, essentially, and I, and I like that way, the spin you put on that, you know, in turn, what I'm hearing is that essentially FedEx corporate job is to make sure that, they're dominating and maintaining right. and increasing market share. And then yep. you, got the, you got the routes, essentially boots on the ground that are just have to worry about getting all these packages delivered on time, you know? Yeah, exactly. And you know, that's kind of nice, you know, you focus on your job and, and FedEx corporate focuses on theirs and you know, everything works out. So, and so it, it, in a nutshell then the ISP means that this whole five contiguous routes requirement right so if you if you don't satisfy that requirement then you've either got to meet it or you have to sell is that yes exactly and so that's what i'm seeing here lately is where these brokers or sellers are coming out with three routes and saying you know hey here's three routes for sale look, look at the finances they're absolutely perfect and then people use a cpa or a lawyer and the cpa will say i verified this and they're perfect and you know sure enough it is then two years later, ISP happens, and because the CPA doesn't know the intricacies of the business to really do a true due diligence evaluation, and then the person loses everything. And, you know, and by everything, I mean close to everything, because it's going to feel so bad because you're selling a, a next to zero, or you're selling to someone else in that terminal that already owns enough routes to be ISP compliant. You know, and if that's the case, well, guess what? They know you got to sell next to zero. So how does that work for your negotiation leverage, right? So um, it, it's, it's not good at all. Uh, you, you don't even want to have that. You don't even want that to be a possibility uh, or the possibility of that situation even happening. And, you know, and there's ways to alleviate that situation. And some people will get three or four routes in the terminal. And, you know, this can be a lucrative strategy if you have the money to be able to buy more routes or have access to the funds you know, to get up to the ISP requirements is very possible to be extremely lucrative. You know, since guess what? Everyone in that terminal that has less than five routes knows they gotta be selling near zero soon. You can come in there with three routes, get your foot in the door, meet those other people, and then maybe good things can happen for everyone where both sides don't lose everything. You've bought some routes at a good discount. You know, they're gonna walk away happy and okay. Uh, so, so there's a lot of opportunity there, and but with that huge opportunity, there's tremendous risk, and and to me that that's more important than anything. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. Well, this has been this has been great, Tony. I mean, you would definitely know your stuff. I mean, if if I'm sitting here, um, you know, looking to buy a route, you know, I would definitely want to call you. So, I mean, uh, and I I get a you know real good sense that of what of the value you bring you know if i would phrase it as you know having that experience and expertise and knowing all those ins and outs of buying a fedex route i mean is there anything mm -hmm. else that you would add to that list of reasons why somebody should contact you uh i mean those those are the main reasons i mean if you're interested in this business and trying to figure out what's actually required then that's one of the biggest things people reach out to me for you know, asking, is this thing really absentee? You know, why are so many people saying this business is absentee? You know, and, and there's some truth to that, and there's a whole lot of omission. You know, working together to really understand how this whole business works and being able to make a great acquisition by being able to understand what it's likely gonna take you to run this and, and for it to be sustainable. 
I mean, it breaks my heart when I see some of these ads out there, you know, amazing routes for sale, two routes. And I mean, that's a good business, but they're selling it in a way that, that's really gonna hurt some people. And, and there's no reason for that. You know what I mean? Like we're in a great industry. It doesn't have to be shady, but you know, sellers and brokers are gonna do whatever they can to make a dollar. And you know, that's why I'm here, you know? Um, I mean, it, it's much more, I mean, you know, like this is a very sort of, this is a very enjoyable sort of job for me. And to be able to help these people out, to work one-on-one, -on -one, you know, that's why I don't have some ebook and that's it, send you off into the sunset. You know, like we're working together, we're on the phone together, we're emailing back and forth together. You know, there's, there's a relationship that gets built up throughout this process. And, you know, so that's really enjoyable to me. Okay, fantastic. And how, how could somebody contact you? What's the best way to contact you? You know, basically just go to the routetycoon.com website. Uh, you can click on the link at the top to say hello or reach out to me there. Uh, if you wanted to grab a call, you can click on the consulting tab at the top. You'll be able to grab a call there or even grab the five hour consult block. It depends on what stage you're really at. You know, a lot of people grab a call at first just to see if they're going in the right direction or not. And once they determine that they are, they'll, they'll go ahead and grab the five hour block. Some people already know enough about it to grab the five hours and we hit the ground running and start evaluating these things together. Okay, well, great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your time and expertise, Tony. And um, I'm sure it will be appreciated by all the listeners. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me, George. I really do appreciate it.